Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with our latest edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. If you've never been here before, it's where we try to give you a general idea as to what's going on with the weather in and around this area of the country, North Mississippi, West Tennessee, Eastern Arkansas. And if you'd like to see more about what's going on in detail around this area, I invite you to check out our webpage. It's available right here at WREG.com slash weather. We've got a pretty active amount of information to pass along, so we're going to be kind of foregoing our usual things that we do on here. We'll still keep the pictures that we show, uh, some of the webcams and things like that. Once again, if you've got weather reports from around your area, temperature, wind speed, cloud cover, rainfall amounts, whatever you've got, drop those into the comments section. City and state will do nicely. Not an entire mailing address. You don't have to send us all of that, but give us an idea as to what the temperature is like where you are, and also give us an idea as to what's going on. What it felt like today, just a general overall report, high temperature, low temperature, amateur meteorology, very cool stuff. Let's take a look and see what you've got going on there. If you've got any weather pictures, stick around. We'll show you some of the ones that got sent in to us over the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a few minutes, so stick around for more on that. Most importantly for tonight is going to be a change in what's going on with the tropics. It's gotten very active very quickly. Now, it's not a direct impact on the Mid-South as of right now, but it's getting, again, a little bit too close for comfort as we watch what goes on into the course of the next couple of days. So if you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them. And if you've got weather reports, again, drop them into the comments section. We'd love to see a little bit more about where you're at and what the weather's like at your location. Let's go ahead and get started right now and show you a little bit more about what's happening with the weather across the Mid-South which, again, shows temperatures pretty much on the mild side into very early Monday morning. Labor Day holiday, a lot of people, again, have time off. So, again, no school tomorrow, not much of anything going on in the way of major amounts of work. But if you have to be there, it's going to be a mild one starting off with temperatures back into the mid-70s with mostly clear skies into the overnight hours and going to be seeing, again, some pretty warm conditions into the next couple of days. Sib Spencer from Freeport, Florida, a little bit out of town. Thanks for joining us. Sticky All Day in Hernando. Heidi Ryan, thank you very much for that one. Very Hot in Whitehaven. Bobby J. Collins Davis, thank you very much uh, for checking in from there. And everybody else checking in from across the Mid-South. Kimmy Barnhill, 82 and clear in Adamsville, Tennessee. 86 high, very hot and muggy in Ash Flats. Uh, Debbie Moore, thank you very much uh, for that one. Joyce Brown, we'll take a look at the forecast for Clarksdale and the rest of the Mid-South. Eddie Goss, welcome to the show. Former production department here at News Channel 3. Very nice all-around guy. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Goss, for tonight. And also, again, some cooler weather possible. We'll talk about that in the forecast in just a little while. Well above normal today. High back in the lower 90s. Regular temperature at this time of the year, mid to upper 80s as we head into the early part of September. These numbers start sliding by just a little bit. Record high, 101 one set back in 2000. That was a very hot year. 70 the average. 74 is where we wound up for today in Memphis and no rainfall to report across much of the area. For tonight, again, looking across the Mississippi River, the lights of West Memphis, Arkansas, sunset fading across the river, and some very nice stargazing tonight as the skies begin to clear out by just a little bit. Matter of fact, you can see Venus in the southwest skies, and right about this area here in about another 30 minutes or so, you should be able, if you look carefully and you're far enough away from city lights, you might be able to see the Chinese space station passing overhead. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Rest of the evening tonight should be looking at mostly clear skies. Again, welcome to everybody who's checking in from across the Mid-South area, and thanks everybody for checking in for right now. Uh, Katie Casey, any bad weather in Senatobia? None at this time, and nothing showing up on Storm Tracker 3S radar at this point. We do have a few thunderstorms popping up again. Again, from time to time. Heaviest weather by far is right around the Clarksdale area, just south of there. Some thunderstorms taking place just west of Tutwiler and moving back to the northwest. Let me get some of that storm tracker information out of there real quick, and we can see a little bit more about what's going on. Also back into around the area of Senatobia, we have a brief thunderstorm taking place on Storm Tracker 3S radar, but just a couple of lightning strikes. Again, little if anything in the way of major amounts of problems out there, so good news. And most of everything here 
Now that the sun is down, all this will be dissipating as it moves out of the picture, so we shouldn't see too much of anything else taking place at this point in time, so good news on that. Back into the area of the Gulf. If you're traveling, a lot of people heading to the Gulf for a last-minute vacation. Next couple of days is going to be very important to check out the weather. Tropical storm watches have been posted for the Delta, back from Mobile all the way into south-central Louisiana for the approach of a tropical depression, or it will be in the next couple of days. We'll talk about that again in just a few minutes. Heat index temperatures already and still back in the upper 90s on live real-time WeatherNet 3. If you'd like this information from these sites on your computer system, go to this website address and click on the weather bug icon for more information about what's going on with weather in to and around the Mid-South. Kevin Ratcliffe from Chattanooga. Sounds good. And say hi to my friend uh, Ellen Nesheim and her family who live around that area. I haven't been back to the aquarium there in quite some time. Lake Cormorant, Sarah Cody Payne, welcome to the show. Uh, very heavy rain in St. Pete, Deborah Campbell Lejeune. Say hello to my wife's aunt and uncle who live in and around that area. Thank you very much for that one. Doris Tolson, bad in South Haven, not at this point in time. Elsa Williams, raining crazy all of a sudden in Clarksdale. A little bit of rain with a thunderstorm moving on through, but otherwise nothing severe at this time. Running the numbers into tonight, again, through News Channel 3 at 10, we could see a few isolated showers and thunderstorms passing on through, but that should be about it for the area right on into tomorrow morning. So if you have any plans for outdoors, this is what we're going to be looking for. Pretty warm and humid temperatures back in the 70s across much of the Mid-South tomorrow morning. Through tomorrow afternoon, not a lot going on. Again, could be that isolated chance of a shower and thunderstorm across the Mid-South. But otherwise, high temperatures, once again, are going to be back in the 90s. So it's going to be pretty hot and steamy across much of the Mid-South right on in through dinner time tomorrow night. Again, the forecast changing a little bit in the next Next couple of days, lower 90s for the Labor Day holiday on Monday, back in the lower 90s. Minimal chances of showers and thunderstorms, but still a small possibility. So going back to school, outdoor practices, marching band, football, soccer, baseball, whatever you've got outside, please keep that in mind. And again, officials for Friday Night Football are going to have to watch this last portion of the forecast very carefully to see what goes on. Now through the next several days, this forecast is going to be very highly dependent on what happens with our new tropical system heading our way. This forecast here, I've designed it again to show sort of the middle ground. It's not all that dry, but it's not going to be a total washout either. We're looking at 30 to 40 percent chances of showers and thunderstorms. And so far, it looks like the storm is going to be heading more west of us, but these numbers will change over the next several days. So it's very important to keep attuned to News Channel 3 for more information about what's going on with this new system. Add to that as that system heads out of the picture. Here's the drum roll as we go into the next several days. Next week, it looks like we might see the possibility of a nice downturn in the temperatures so that by September 11th, we may be looking at numbers back in the lower 70s for highs, lower 60s, maybe even a few, dare I say it, upper 50s for low temperatures out there. So again, some pretty nice conditions if everything holds. But once again, this is still pretty far in the future. So you got to check in and see what's going on. You can't really, again, check in tonight and expect things to be the same all the way throughout the course of the next several days. Uh, Lisa Hinton, nothing in the Gulf, please, two weeks from now. We'll add that to the list. Thank you very much for that one. Houston, Mississippi, Scott Jarvis, 79 degrees. Feels like 84 in Houston, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that one. Regina L. Watson, swimming weather. Haven't been to a pool in quite some time, so that would be sounding like a very good idea for right now. Good shower in Oxford, Abigail Cook. Thank you very much for that one. And from Brownsville, Judy Kennedy... Canadian Mouser, humid and clear around Brownsville. Thank you very much uh, for that one at this point. Looking back toward the Hawaiian Islands as if they can't catch a break at this time, now that the other storms have gone, Hector and the other storms that have moved on through, Norman, major hurricane, Category 4, making its way almost making a beeline for Hawaii, but good news at this time, it looks like it's going to be diminishing, heading over some cooler waters, so it should only be a Category 1 storm by Tuesday evening, so very good news here, but again, if you're traveling toward Hawaii, that could be a bit of a problem, so something to think about there. Now, what we have going on, the big news for tonight, 
and this is a mouthful, potential tropical cyclone number seven. What does that mean? It means that this storm is just below tropical storm strength, and this could again become a tropical storm in the very near future, possibly overnight, maybe even in the next couple of hours, but it's still got to get up to about 39 miles per hour for that to happen. Florida right here, Cuba down here, the Bahamas right here. The storm is starting to swirl a little bit. It's getting a lot more cohesion and it's looking a lot better for this thing to develop. Not to mention the fact that over the next several days, it's going to be moving right over the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the current track has it going into the Gulf, roundabout, unfortunately, New Orleans and into around anywhere close to the south central United States, anywhere between about Memphis, Little Rock, and down to around Houston, Texas, as we go toward later on this week. Now, the big thing about this is air around these systems rotates counterclockwise, so as this moves this direction, warm, moist air is going to be shoveled up onto the surface of the United States, and we could see, again, a lot more rainfall depending on the track of this. If this sinks farther south, we won't see quite as much rainfall, and it should be a nicer, although hot, end of the week. If this goes a little bit closer to us, we may see more moisture heading our way. So right now, a little too early to tell, 120 hours out, but this needs to be watched very carefully, especially if you're heading anywhere between, say, Tampa St. Pete, Fort Myers, Mobile, down to around the area of New Orleans, and even all the way over to around Houston. This system does not look like it's going to become a hurricane. It's going to be a tropical storm. Wind's going to increase possibly to around 60 miles per hour by about Tuesday afternoon. But so far, it does not look to be a hurricane. If this becomes a tropical storm into the next several hours, this will become Tropical Storm Gordon. We'll be watching again with this with a lot of interest. And again, this will change over the next several days. So definitely want to keep it tuned for more information on that. Now, we've talked about potential tropical cyclone number seven. Let's talk about what's going on out into the Atlantic. We have the tropical storm Florence, which moved off the African coast. And it's not alone. New disturbances are lining up back to the east of this over Africa, and as those swing out into the Atlantic, we're going to be seeing better possibility of showers and thunderstorms developing, maybe even tropical storms, maybe even hurricanes. But here's where it gets very interesting. High pressure sitting north of this area, keeping this location fairly calm and quiet. Air around high pressure rotates clockwise. Air around these low pressure areas rotates the opposite direction. So this is going to help to scoot Florence along moving into the mid-Atlantic, and if this is also being pushed by that area of high pressure, that heads into the Gulf. Is it possible that this could somehow shepherd Florence and whatever else is following behind it? If this doesn't move, it's a good possibility we could see some more storms heading our way as we go into the next several days. So once again, the tropics getting very active all of a sudden with numbers again, with number seven back here, Florence over here, and maybe some more activity coming our way from off of Florida. Now again, not a time for panic. This is not why we tell you about this, but it's a time to be prepared prepared and to watch what goes on and definitely want to stay tuned again to News Channel 3, especially again for updates on the forecast here at our website and we'll keep you advised on that. All these numbers will change in the next several days, so keep it tuned again for more information again on that. Hundo Puncho Percent, what would make this storm change direction at any point in time? Well, as of right now, again, this storm that we're looking at for right now the winds in the atmosphere are driving it, and that includes this area of high pressure back to the west. So if this moves away from us, there's less steering, less force of the wind moving on through. So that could be something that helps to alter it. Uh, on the other hand, if this moves a little bit farther south, then it might deflect Seven and Florence farther away from us, making it not so much of a threat. So that is just a couple of the things that may actually happen at this point in time. So that's something that we're going to be, again, watching with a lot of interest at this point in time. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 on that. Kimberly Bishop getting ready again in Louisiana. Yes, that's going to be something to take a look at. Regina L. Watson, what about around Pensacola, Florida? Right now, it looks like the panhandle is not going to be seeing too much out of this for the time being. So far, anyway, this is taking a northwesterly track and is going to be going mainly toward the delta and back into around New Orleans. 
Louisiana, East Texas, somewhere in there. It could go anywhere in this white cone area. The red line is just the average of all that. So again, any place in this white cone, that's where the storm could go. It could go farther north toward Mobile. It could sink farther out into the Gulf of Mexico and aim for Houston. So that, again, is going to be one of the things we're looking about right now. But once again, Pensacola doesn't appear to be on a track for this at this point. But once again, it's time to watch what goes on at this point. Uh, Madison Miller, if you're talking about the storms around the Mid-South area, we have no severe weather to talk about right now. These particular storms are, again, going to be getting worse. They're going to be getting more strong and also the possibility of more heavy rainfall. Uh, that's something we're going to watch again with a lot of interest over the next several days. So please keep it tuned to the weather experts again for more information on what's going on there. All right, quick check of what's going on with cameras around the Mid-South area. Fred Style 88, a nice view of sunrise from around Ole Miss at the Paris Yates Chapel, if I'm reading that correctly. Thank you very much, Fred Style 88, for that one. James R. Gulledge, nice view of some of the flora and fauna around Humboldt, Tennessee, with a high of 89 degrees up that direction. And Deborah J54 picking up a nice view of Bright Star Sirius. Nice view from early this morning around Humboldt, Tennessee. So Deborah J54, thank you very much again for that one on there. If you've got weather pictures, We'd like to be able to see, again, them and tweet them along to everybody else. So please send her your pictures along at aonic underscore WREG3 at this point in time. And again, this is where we're seeing a great opportunity for you to get your pictures out there, some wonderful photography into around portions of the Mid-South. Uh, Charles Edward Stanton, why is Milwaukee getting a severe storm, I'm assuming, right now? Uh, it's the same front storm y'all having. Well, again, not every single storm in every single storm system is going to be severe. You're going to have more severe weather at one location than the other. And again, not going to be storms that are going to be severe all along a storm system or along a cold front. A couple of them could be. Maybe a lot of them could be, but not every single one of them is going to be. So that's the way that the atmosphere kind of mixes up on things like that. Uh, trendy billet, when can we see the Chinese space station? Here's what we're looking at. Again, a few clouds left over out there, so we marked it as partly cloudy. And this is not going to be like the International Space Station. It doesn't have quite as many solar panels reflecting that sunlight down to Earth. And it's going to be at a low angle in the sky. So this is not going to be a bright pass, it's going to be best if you see it from out away from city light. So this is going to be, again, relatively dim. Southwest sky, you're going to have Venus down that direction, passing by Jupiter, passing very close to this yellowish dot about a billion miles away in our solar system around Saturn, rising in the southwest about 833. It's going to be a semi-bright point of light. You may have to use some binoculars to spot for this one, and it should be rising into around the southeastern sky, going just above Mars, also very bright in the southeast, before it's going to fade away around 8.38 later on this evening. So again, southwest sky at about 8.34. That's roughly about 12 minutes from now. So if you have a good, clear view of the southwest skies, you might be able to see this. But again, a few clouds out there, and this is not going to be the brightest satellite for the sky tonight. But unfortunately, that's about as good as it gets. So good luck with spotting this out there. And wave to the astronauts up there. And again, take a look around. And we'll feature more of these coming up in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for more on what's out there with News Channel 3. Catch my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And of course, I'll be back on with Bob and Josh coming up bright and early Tuesday morning. Not tomorrow. They're going to be off for Labor Day. So stick around for more on that. Haley Tinius. Yes, the tropical depression could bring some stronger weather to our area, but right now the Storm Prediction Center does not hold any threat for severe weather in the Mid-South at this point, but that could also change in the next couple of days. So thanks a lot for asking that. 84 degrees, Don Oswald in Hernando, Mississippi uh, at this point in time. Facebook user, what does satellites have to do with weather reports? Uh, Quite a lot. It would give us an idea as to what's going on from an eye in the sky up in space. So again, that's a pretty good indication that we can use that as one of our tools to help forecast the weather for you. Great.
if not a little odd question on there, but thank you very much for that one. Rest of the evening, again, should be pretty quiet. We'll have more details on your forecast coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. And, of course, Todd Demers will have more on your forecast coming up bright and early Monday morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. That'll be starting at 4.30, an update on the tropics and everything else that might be affecting the Mid-South for the Labor Day holiday and into, again, the rest of this next week for the next several days of September. So stay tuned for more on that. Questions, concerns? Concerns, anything on here we missed that you would like to see, send it along to me, question or otherwise, at austin.onic at wreg.com. Would love to have you along and give you an idea as to what's happening out there. So let us know what you want to see on here, and we'll be glad to give it a shot to see what it is. We can keep you coming back for this update on here. And thanks a lot to everybody for joining us on there. Another update of your complete forecast coming up in just a bit. Let's see, Julie Jeffrey, good weather for canoeing tomorrow. Uh, not bad, kind of hot and humid out there, and may want to take the umbrella with you just to be on the safe side. April, hence, 82 degrees in Eureka Springs, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that one, and everybody else for checking in for tonight. Stick around for more with News Channel 3 at 10 later on this evening, and of course at wreg.com slash weather. Thanks to everybody for joining us on Weather Overtime tonight. <laughs>